Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's been a while since I've given you an update in my own garden. I've been quite busy with my roofing project, but that's over and done with. So it's now time to get back into the garden. I'll give you a tour around our garden and we'll do a bit of picking of some of the vegetables that we've been growing. One of the things that we've really struggled with this year has been the drought conditions. The fact that it hasn't rained for so long. Now all of a sudden that that heat wave has ended, we're getting loads of sudden rain. We're getting loads of rain coming down really fast. So we've got to be a little bit wary about some of the diseases that rain's going to bring with it. So the garden's quite overgrown um, because I've, it's just not been tended to for a while. And I'm just straightening up these paths, garden paths. And um, I'm using this edging tool, so this edging spade. And I've never used one of these before, surprisingly. I've always used just a normal, normal spade and this is, it's so much easier. I'm really surprised at how much easier it is. Because I've just thought, oh, I'll just use the normal garden spade and try to use that. But this does, is making life a lot easier actually. I am quite impressed. This year has been a really good year for chilies. I mean, absolutely amazing year for chilies. We've got Naga harvest, are ready to be harvested outside. Uh, these are Bangladeshi Naga coming on. Uh, they're doing really good. My Aji lemons are t starting to ripen now. We're, we're regularly picking Aji lemons as they're ripening. We've got green chilies coming on, absolutely beautiful and nice and hot. And because the weather's been so hot, they've been absolutely f perfect outside. No trouble at all. Oh, so we've got uh, boot jaloki over here, so ghost peppers. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. So we're just going to wait for them to ripen up. So again, more naga ripening up outside the greenhouse. Beautiful. As we're going into the greenhouse, we've got loads of bottle gourds growing over the top. So there's bottle gourds hanging up there. There's bottle gourds hanging on top of our greenhouse. We might even pick that bad boy there. In this greenhouse, this, this is pretty much my chilli house this year. Um, absolutely beautiful. This beautiful specimen that I showed you earlier on this year. Look at it. It's not the biggest plant in the world, but boy, has it produced some chilies. One thing you might notice is sometimes the flowers might stick around the end of the chili and not quite fall off. So it's important to come and scrape that off because that can make the chili deformed. So do come pick them off. But this one has produced some real nice chilies on such a small plant. I'm really impressed with this guy. Hyacinth beans have been brilliant this year. Um, they've not been great inside the greenhouse because we've only had one. We've only had a couple of vines that have made it, but outside we've had. We've, ha we've harvested a couple of kilos of these guys already. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm just gonna pick all these little <coughs> trusses off. We've got more flowers coming on. So if you do grow them inside, uh, these beans tend to, like all beans, they tend to shoot for the stars. So if you've got a trellis like this, you can grow them horizontally, but you're gonna have to come in and train them. You're gonna have to put, come in and pull those flowers down and that'll produce beans hanging down instead of touching the sky. Because what happens is as the days are getting colder, the glass is starting to condense a bit more. This foliage will touch the glass and it'll rot on the glass. It'll just create more problems for you. Loads more naga growing down there and becoming ripe. So all that's going into my pickle uh, this year. And you know, we've got the naga pickles for sale. The spaghetti chilies have been absolutely amazing this year. So we'll get the MFG uh, chili challenge going very soon. Every single one of my naga plants have produced really well. There's some of them aren't quite yet ripe, but they produced really well. We've got long chilies here and look, little beasties like that. Be careful of caterpillars eating your chilies. Now that guy is going straight to my chickens. Yeah, that's it, the chickens have had him. Oh no, that's such a shame. Let's get that one off. That is such a shame. This really long chili's grown. It's probably about 12 inch. It's grown to the bottom and it's touched the floor and it's started to rot or something's eaten it. But we'll get rid of that end. The rest of that can go inside. We've got a real biggie back there, look at that one. So probably about 30 centimetres or more. Um, and that might be a personal best for me, actually. 
let's just prop this branch up so we can give it a little bit of support and keep those bits those chilies off the ground oh, actually that's got to go that's the end of that's been eaten as well look at that that's disappointing isn't it I mean look at these small chili plants now for the amount of space that plant's taken look at the chilies it's produced absolutely fantastic really 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 impressed with this but um this is a choo choo plant uh or chiote i've i've never ha managed to get fruit off it i did see a post recently about someone growing these in wool in rochdale um, and he grows them on second year vines and that's what they are in the native environment they are perennials so if i can manage to overwinter this he manages to overwinter his outside let's see how heavy i can mulch this and see if i can get it to overwinter sunflowers have been absolutely amazing this year as well and in amongst the sunflowers we've got more uh, hyacinth beans just growing every you know they've been absolutely phenomenal out this year really good year for hyacinth beans so those bottom ones we're going to let them fatten up outside and save the seeds here so we can get more cold tolerant plants next year see the good thing about it this year is they've been they've grown nicely enough so i can just come in and pick a whole bunch rather than leaving the ends to keep on growing and those ones will leave for seed these bottle gourds have turned into some funny shaped bottle gourds every single one is like Sifa de for mum says, squashed and all sorts of deformed shapes like that, that guy there. Perfectly fine, no obstruction, but he's turned into a, a mutant. So Rachel, if you're watching this, I've got a shark muffin melon that's just decided to climb the hedge. Uh, luckily we trimmed the hedges in time. And if you look into the middle of my hedge, there's one guy going right in the middle of my hedge. So, oh, that's good enough to be picking actually. Let's have him. Bismillah. There we go, that's a nice size. We've already had probably about five or six of these already off this one plant and there's, there's three plants. They're producing like monsters. We grow aubergines every year. This year has been phenomenal. Yeah, the heat has been absolutely a massive blessing for them. Bismillah, get that one. So these are long purple variety. There we go. Here's another one for you. Unfortunately, a slug's bitten that one. So we'll have to um, cut out the slug eaten bit. Now, if this was a commercial farm, that would have ended up in the bin. But because this is our garden and we know what's gone on, we'll cut out the sluggy bit and we'll eat the rest of it. And that way we have no waste. Let's see what we're getting on this one. So, okay, okay, okay. So, get that one. There you go. Bismillah. Don't, don't cut anything else. Here, take these scissors. These are better. And that guy as well. Yes, leave those. They'll keep growing, so leave them. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the way, this is the way to do it. You just come around and pick a couple off each plant. Big. Yeah. Good. Leave them. That's a fat long one. Leave them. That that's just under picking, so leave that one. We can pick that one a little bit later. But take that that nasty leaf, can you take that off please? Up here. Yeah. So if you do get nasty leaves at this stage, just trim them off. Mm. And these low hanging leaves as well. It'll just help with airflow as well. So that one as well, sweetheart, this yeah. one. I don't know why, for some reason, my fig tree was doing absolutely beautiful. For some reason, last year we got loads of figs on it. For some reason, it just decided to die. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it, it just died. Um, so I've, instead of cutting it down and shredding it, I've allowed my shark fin melon to grow up it, or my fig leaf gourd. So my fig leaf gourd is growing up my fig, leaf, fig tree. The big orange things, let's have a look at what big orange things you're talking about. Oh, so Uchukikuri squash. Uchukikuri, yeah? I can never say it, but everyone understands what I'm talking about. 
We've got loads growing at, at the back. They've grown all over the place. This bed has been absolutely fantastic. We've had such a wonderful sweet corn harvest this year. Some of the best corn I've ever had. Sweet corn used to be one of those plants that was a real nemesis of mine. But for the last few years, they we're producing really good sweet corn and I'm thinking, yes, it's no longer a nemesis. These aubergines are a little bit small to be harvesting, so we'll leave them. Uh, we've got peppers growing outside. Hey, look at that. What are they? Again, they're um, sweet peppers, you know, the ones that you like, the big fat ones. Oh, and the hot wax, the Hungarian hot wax. I love Hungarian hot wax because they've got that mild bit of spiciness, but you can mix it into anything and it's perfectly fine. Um, Ebango 9, is this one Is this one at the bottom ready to go? Yeah, that one's ready to go. Go and snip that one. Um, I don't like the way you snip. You snip right in the middle of the stem. <laughs> See, where I would have snipped was, look, I would have snipped, there's the, there's the stalk, I would have snipped there and got rid of the whole, you know, the whole stem. Because if you're going to keep them for a few days, that can get, start rotting and that rot can go into the aubergine really quickly. So if you're going to store it longer, the longer the stem, the better. Okay. If you've taken Danu Morris plants off me this year, I hope they've been as productive as this because these are immensely productive and extremely hot. Out of the chilli plants, this is probably one of the hottest chilies that I've ever had. I'm not talking about the Naga types, but this out of the green chilli types, this is probably the hottest chilli I've ever had. I bit into one of these and it blew my head off. Absolutely, really, really hot. There's some more down there as well. Yeah, they're everywhere. See, and they're starting to ripen up and as they get riper, they'll get even hotter. And uh, yeah. <laughs> This pumpkin plant has just taken over everywhere. It's got a couple of pumpkins on it that are growing. They're coming up to a decent size. Uh, another one, and then we've got an orange one down there, an orange one down there. But the plant's just taken over. Look, it's growing up the hedges. It's growing up the on top of the greenhouse. It's just absolutely mental, this guy. Oh, mashallah. See, the warmth, you can see the warmth and the impact of the warmth on, on uh, warm, warm loving plants. So let's just clear up some of these leaves. Here, grab those leaves. Some of these older leaves, let's just get rid of some of them. But this one has been, this is a really productive aubergine. See, so far we've been harvesting aubergines from outside and these are aubergines from inside. Look at that. So that aubergine at the very bottom, that's been saved for seed. This is, that's the first aubergine that we got uh, to pollinate. And this is where I'd trim. Khadija's been trimming the aubergine from the middle of the stalk. I'd trim there. And then you've got an absolutely beautiful aubergine like that. There you go. I know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm teaching you. But let's see how many we can pick right now off this one. Subhanallah. That's, these are beautiful. MashaAllah, do increase airflow in aubergines. They, they are very prone. They're just like tomatoes. They are very prone to the similar type of diseases. So do be very vigilant and make sure you've got good airflow around your aubergine plants. See, people ask me, do I take suckers out of aubergines? They don't produce enough. Look at that. That suckers produce some beautiful flowers there. That suckers produce some beautiful flowers there and lots of aubergines. So Lubiuri yard long beans, beautiful. Look at the size of these guys. Absolutely beautiful. We'll pick these as well. So don't crop me now, Rachel. I think you said your chili plants are four foot long. This one's about four foot long as well. They're growing to absolute monsters, some of these guys. More chilies back here, some more loads and loads of naga here. Red naga, yellow naga, uh, naga from my village back home over here. They're my village naga back there. So they're from my, my home village in Bangladesh. So we've got a few hyacinth beans here. These bottom ones are the ones that we're saving for seed as well. And those, these flowers, you really need to bring them down. If they are, because what can happen like this plant, because I've not been out here for a while, they've all clumped up in that corner and that all ends up with disease. So you need to bring them down away from that side and that spreads them out a bit. 
and it allows light to keep coming into the greenhouse and especially as um, especially as the days are shortening up it's really important to try and get as much light in here as possible I mean they're still long days now but they're gonna start getting shorter Sun Gold Tomatoes I tried these up at Dean's garden a couple of years ago absolutely amazing I love these guys mm. I come into the garden and I'm just munching on these cherry tomatoes for fun. Alaric, you mentioned that I grow a lot of small tomatoes. That's the reason why, because I just like picking them and just eating them. We've got some spaghetti chilies over here that are ripening. Chili. Yeah, we've got some, oh, there's a monster as well there. Some really good ones here. So. And are those ones spicier? These aren't spicy at all. You can, anyone can eat these ones. Oh, Dad said they were spicy. Hmm? You can just bite it. You can yeah, you can. These aren't spicy at all. Yeah, let's but try one. No. Do you want to try one? You really want to try one? Yeah, they're really spicy. No, they're not spicy at all. Just do the other one. Yeah. Oh no, I got just a little bit. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Go on, bite that one. That's dirty. That's dirty. Ah. You eat more than a speck of muck before you die. What? Go on. Did you bite it? A little bit. Go on. Is it spicy? No. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're not spicy at all. So these purple tiger chilies. Michael so Michael sent me these these this plant. And these purple tiger chilies really good looking plant. Beautiful looking plant. I'm definitely gonna try and overwinter this guy because it's really impressive on how pretty it is and the chilies look really good we haven't had any off it yet um, we've got some on it but we haven't any, picked any and tasted them yet but i'm hoping they're a nice chili because it looks really good we've got more sweet corn let's see if it's time to pick these i think they're ready to go so the way to tell the sweet corn's ready to be picked is your bristles are going to start to turn yellow and we come in and just pull that off And there you go. Look at that for a head of corn. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. So we'll pick a few of these. That one, that one. This is what I mean about those cherry tomatoes that you just come out like this. Oh, wicked. So these are the lubiodies, my mum's just picked them. Okay, put them in the bowl with the aubergines. Okay, thank you, I've got some. So, this is what I mean, if you've got old leaves on tomatoes, make sure you're clipping them off. So, it's, it's about now that it normally strikes. So, and if you have got plants, do thin them out, get rid of as much of that foliage that's potentially going to get blight. So, that's, that's a really nice long one. Oh, that's, that's really disappointing. The slugs have finished that off pretty much. So that guy's gone. That's gone. Oh, it's all gone. So there's little horrible little slugs as well. That one's okay. Yeah, any red ones you see, pick them all. Oh, some more sun gold tomatoes over here. Honeycomb tomatoes, a yellow variety, really I nice ones as well. Day. Yeah? What that do? Okay. Get that big one there. This bed has been probably the most disappointing thing I've ever seen this year. It's been really unproductive. Normally there's squash and potatoes and everything in this bed. The potatoes have been poor. The squash have been absolutely pathetic. That's the biggest squash I got out of this whole bed. The slugs destroyed my early squash and it's the, the, the lack of rain really affected this bed and I didn't get my hose out till very late so um, I wasn't able to fix the problem but that's, that's been the problem here, the rain has really affected me The peas were good Yeah, the peas were good That's true The bottle gourds over here have been absolutely brilliant Really good bottle gourds The vines are looking a little bit tired and a little bit old now so they're starting to show that the tips are growing, the older leaves are starting to die off. Uh, another Uchuki curry back here. 
Um, I don't know why I've managed to keep so many Ochuki curries for myself I've, and what I did with all the other different types of squash plants. I don't know what I've done with them. Um, but that's what happens every year. I always keep mislabeled stuff. Uh, but again, this bed's been suffered because of the lack of rain. My potatoes have been really poor. They need picking. And we'll pick them uh, very soon, probably this week. My pears have been really bad this year. But this apple tree, uh, just like every year, it never lets me down. Absolutely wonderful apples all the way up to the top of the tree. Beautiful, really productive. But it did shed a lot of apples. I mean, the, the lack of rain affected it. That tree there, every single apple fell off that tree just because it was so dry that the pear trees just didn't produce. My mum just pulled this really nice dinga. It's taller than I am, absolutely wonderful. So look at the size of that. Yes, it's taller than you. So not a bad harvest. And we'll do our squash and we'll do our potatoes in the next few days and we'll see what we get with that. Considering the year that we had, you'd have thought that the harvest would have been really poor. But some of the things have suffered, things like cabbages, lettuces, the brassicas, the cold loving plants. And the hot loving wood plants, the hot weather plants, these have really strived. They've, they've gone into their own. I mean, the aubergines, the chilies, they've just gone, taken on a life of their own. Things that we've never managed to produce in the quantities that we've managed to produce yeah absolutely phenomenal so this is something that may be figure into your planning for next year if the climate is going to continuously get hotter and hotter and hotter which is forecast to do climate change the reality really think about growing more warm weather plants more heat tolerant plants we'll continue the our harvest over the next few weeks and we'll continue these harvest celebrations so i'll leave it there for this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah